check, check. Well, 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 welcome to our first video. Uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, smash that like button, hit the bell down there, follow along so you know when we put up new videos. Um, here's our first video. We figured we'd do a Q&A, some of the commonly asked questions, make it short, give you a taste, and kind of get our feet wet so we can keep doing this and give you guys what you're asking for. I'm Corey Polito. This is I'm Jordan Polito. the boss. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you'll see dogs running around periodically, and we'll jump right in, do a, a couple questions. I'm going to let Jordan answer. I'll fill in some of the gaps. Like I said, we're going to make it short and just try to make it free flowing. So the first question that we have from our fans, do, you, do any of the dogs ever have trouble getting along? Jordan? <laughs> um, yes. So uh, when you introduce a new hound into the pack, um, there is a little bit of a hierarchy that has to break down first. Um, so out here in the doghouse, Forrest is our pack leader. He is our alpha dog. Um, he is the one who sets all the male, the other male hounds um, straight. So he's the one who makes it very known early on that he is the pack leader. Um, he initially kind of picked a fight with Willie when we first introduced Willie into the doghouse here. Um, Eddie, Eddie is very much a follower, so Eddie just kind of bowed down to Forrest when he was introduced into the back. Um, and and he's very young. Eddie's very Eddie's young. Eddie's very young, and Forrest yeah. is a senior. Forrest is old. Um, so Forrest is probably between 9 and 10 years old. Um, so he kind of doesn't put up with the um, rambunctiousness of Eddie, and he lets it be known. Um, and then we have Bo. Um, Bo, Bo in Forest probably got in the most tips, um, probably two or three. Uh, but once Bo, once all of the dogs became neutered, we don't have an issue anymore. Um, I will say that. At this current stage, being that we do not segregate the dogs, we do not separate them, we cannot take in any more male dogs that are not neutered. Um, so when we get them from, when we get a call from animal control or um, a shelter asking for us to take in a new hound, uh, most of the time they are not spayed or neutered when they first come in. So we will not be able to take those dogs currently um, just because of forest and um, the living conditions that we provide. Well, that's just, that's just the dogs here on this side in this doghouse. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've still, so uh, we've got the eight here, and we can break down more of what Scarlet Oak Farms is, but we're just answering the questions in no particular order. Um, we also have five on the other side, and I think, you know, not that we're experts, but you know, we've, we've been around dogs long enough. We've seen tips, I guess, is, which is the word that you would like, whatever a tip is. Um, we've sure. seen you know, argument. We've seen tips, fights, and personalities. I think the dogs on this side are working their personalities out more, and you kind of see the, the dominant dogs and they continuously try to spread, I think, their dominant nature. So oh, yeah. We've got a couple, um, Ladybird on the side that lives with us. She's been dominant since day one. Um, but um, keep her in line. You know, I think one thing that's ironic that we've learned is they're dogs, they're animals by nature, so you have to remind them that you two are the pack. You are oh, the alpha. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, helps in the chain of command, yes, we, uh, myself, Corey, um, are the absolute leaders, but within the actual um, hound breeds. In that order? Yes. Okay. Of course. <laughs> um, that's good. Yes, yeah. uh, next question, do we train our dogs 
or do we just let them do, I think specifically the word for it, or just let them do their hound dog thing? Mm -hmm. um, so we mostly just let them do their thing. Uh, these dogs, you're lucky if they even learn their name. Um, so trying to train them, I feel like has been very difficult. Um, honestly, timing is not our friend. We don't really have a lot of time to devote to, to training them. Um, however, we have been working on, um, especially out here in the dog house, um, teaching them not to jump. Um, we have so many visitors and so many individuals who want to experience what it's like out here at Scarlet Oak Farms. And, um, you know, we may have some older individuals or even young children. We have a two-year-old ourselves that comes out here. So, um, being able to share this with everyone um, in a safe manner is really important to us. So, the jumping, you know, Forrest himself is 90 plus pounds, so um, him jumping on anyone is going to hurt. Uh, so, and, and when you have, even regardless of their weight, when you have eight dogs jumping on you at once, it's very overpowering. So, um, one of our immediate goals in training is jumping, eliminate the jumping. So, um, but other than that, no, they do their thing. Yeah, no, they, they really do their thing. I think it's ironic. One of our board members, Tina, um, put it in a really good way for me that I drastically changed my mindset on dogs. I was always, grew up in a dog household, and it was always, tell the dog down. You know, the dog is supposed to be super obedient. But, you know, Tina experiencing the um, the dog shelter world, she reminded me, when people come to my house, I tell them if they don't want dogs jumping on them, or if they don't like the dog smell, or if they don't like dogs, period, um, not to be so blunt, but this is my house. This is the dog's house, and I think we want them to be comfortable, we want them to um, enjoy where they're at, so it's not so much as um, be obedient, but I think the training that we choose is so they're social. Yeah, um, yeah. Safety. Yeah. That type of thing. Absolutely. But no, they jump on our couches, um, they get in our face, but that's because we're comfortable with it and we enjoy that type of stuff. So we just remind people who come in, okay, by the way, here's how the dogs interact, um, and we'll just try to kind of guide it as much as we can. Next question. I wonder, I'm not sure who this is from. Who's your favorite employee? Well, let me start by saying we don't have any employees. Um, Scarlet Oak Farms is 100% volunteer. Um, it's volunteer time, volunteer funding. Um, but who's my favorite um, person to be around out there? The dogs, of course. Duh. Anybody. Of course. Anybody. That was a great question, whoever asked that. Yeah, but all funding um, that we bring into Scarlet Farms goes immediately back to um, the, the dogs here and um, any additional rescue efforts that we make. Uh, so we don't have any paid employees. Uh, myself and Corey are all volunteer time. Um, yeah. And we can get into that later. It's, it's volunteer because we love what we do. Yeah, very passionate, um, obviously. You know, we, we were going to do this regardless, and we can get into that story, or you can ask another question, and we can dig a lot deeper into that. But yeah, it's volunteer. I, it's not a second guess. I wake up, I know what I'm doing, I take care of the dogs, and just to repeat that process. Um, next question, do we offer tours? So it's something we definitely want to get into. Right now, um, we're, only, we're only two years old, so we're extremely new to this, but um, we uh, want to offer tours in the future. COVID kind of put a kink in, I think, everyone's plans. Um, but we have started doing um, like a two-hour visit on Saturdays, a two-hour window visit um, from 12 to 2. As long as you arrange that with us ahead of time, we're more than welcome to have people out here, um, let them meet the dogs, let them experience what we do, let them see um, the facility. 
Um, I even think we would love to introduce virtual tours um, for those who are not local and be able to experience the same thing. But right now, we do not offer tours, but stay tuned, it's coming in the future. Yeah, we, and to hit on what she was saying, I started, like this is just us doing this with a couple other volunteers who help us out a lot. Um, you're doing Google 360 photos, so if you hop on Google Street Tour, you can come in and you can see, take a look around. Um, we've branched out. We haven't talked about it a lot, but I heard mentioned actually today that we have considered, um, people have been asking, ironic, they want to stay with the dogs. Oh, yeah, um, which yeah. Which I, I, I think is an actually pretty cool idea, but mm -hmm. logistics and safety, um, I would want to test that out. So I've been telling Jordan, I think I may sleep out here a few nights just to see how it's going to work, comfort, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, right now, uh, we're doing the 12 to 2 window, appointment only, which has always okay. been really appointment only, because um, as as we know, and a few of the volunteers know, it's in our backyard. Yeah, this is property that we've donated to the organization. Um, we live right next door, so. Um, Safety first. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Um, Wrap it up with a couple more questions. The last one, I think, I wanted to do this last. Um, one, because I know my wife. Um, and two, just because I wanted to do it a little bit differently, but how did we get started? And are we the only two employees? That was a question that somebody asked. Same. What is it? Same point. So how did we get started? Let's see. Um, so it all started with our first rescue, Scarlett. She was a hound dog. Um, we got her back in 2007, and she was diagnosed with lymphoma um, back in 2016 or 2017. Um, but we knew that her life was coming to an end, and so emotionally, I needed a way for her legacy to live on. I knew that we would continue with rescue work the rest of our lives. It's just who we are. Um, but I wanted a way to find an avenue for hound dogs. There are abundant. There are an abundant amount of um, stray hounds in our area, and um, because Scarlett was a hound, that's where my passion lies: is providing them with a, a safe home that they don't typically get. Um, so knowing her life was coming to an end, we started discussing possibilities of starting uh, a rescue. I've, I've always wanted a place for dogs, and this was a way to make that happen. Um, and it was a way for me to always keep her legacy very close. So um, in 2018, we completed all the necessary paperwork to get this thing started. We built this facility. Um, we donated part of our land to the organization um, and kind of went from there. And before the building was built, we I was so dedicated that we just started bringing them into our home. Um, we brought six into our home um, before the building was built. And then we now have eight out here. But um, the ones who start in our home, stay in our home, I didn't feel like it was fair to take that environment and then uproot them and bring them out here to the dog house. So, and vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. So those who have started out here in the dog house have remained out here in the dog house. Um, it's, all about, it's all about the quality of life for them um, and for me, why we do this. Um, we do not adopt them out. That was important because um, most of these hounds have a background that um, is probably brings a lot of pain for them and for me to ooh, work on their rehabilitation. It was important that once they got here, once they learned this was home, this will make it home. Um, so our intake numbers are much lower. And, and fewer than any traditional rescue that adopts these dogs out. Um, but I'm okay with that because, like I said, um, it was also important that we do not segregate them, that they get to live in a free open space just as they would in any home. Um, so finding 
dogs, ensuring that we accept the right dogs to fit into our environment is important. Um, one thing we get asked a lot is, do we only do hounds? The answer is yes. Um, that is because hound breeds are very accepting of other, of other hounds, and so it makes this whole idea uh, of them living in an open space work versus being kenneled off or um, sectioned off. Um, and then, what was it about of our employees? Are we the only two employees? Oh, so we're not, again, there are no employees. No one is paid. Um, it's all volunteer time. We do have a board that consists of what, six people? Yeah, six people. Us included, six people. Yeah, us included, six total board members. Um, so we have those that kind of help run, um, help keep the organization up and running. Um, but uh, I thought I saw, did somebody ask, do we do this full time? Yeah, is this our full time? So no, for me, yes. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I do this, as well as um, uh, an online business. But Corey, no, he actually teaches full time, so he does this in his spare time. Which accumulates to a full time job. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do we devote, devote amount of time to be a full time job? Yes, and then yeah. some. But um, again, no paid employees. Yeah, we've got three businesses. Um, I teach full time. She's a full time mom, which obviously we would argue is uh, the hardest job in the world. But let me let me jump back. That's Jordan's story on how this started in her head. Um, realist, yes, that's how it started. But she mentioned we had brought in dogs after the fact. We were bringing in dogs, and I saw the writing on the wall once we were up to four or five, and I believe I had slightly suggested the idea. I come from a business background and I teach business. Um, so I got to think, there's no way we could financially do this. Um, we were passionate about it. Um, it wasn't going to stop, I knew that. And I wasn't mad about that because I love the dogs too. And I, Scarlett was our child. Um, before we had a child, I think probably both of us were thinking, well, shoot, is this going to be our kid? Um, and so I didn't want to lose her just as much as she didn't want to lose her. And we were both, I think when we mentioned it, it was kind of like one of those look at each other in the eyes and, well, heck yeah, let's do this. And so we just kept taking the appropriate steps. I'm the pusher, and Jordan is the... Um, pump the brakes, now let's actually implement those things and put some strategy behind it and I kind of get her out of her comfort zone. So I think I pushed her, kept pushing, kept pushing, and then two years now, here's where we are. So yeah, this it's a labor of love. Uh, I love what we do. It's fantastic looking back two years from now, what we've built and to be quite honest, what those around us have allowed us to build, the volunteers, we wouldn't be where we are. Without them, it'd definitely be a, slong, a slow and arduous process. Um, but yeah, this is, that's how we got started. We're not full-time employees, but this is definitely more than a full-time job. And... Do we do the day-to-day -day operations by ourselves? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's a random pop-in once a week. Yeah. Some of our board members do volunteer yeah. their time, but yes, it's day-to-day. It's us it's in the us. morning, and it's us at night, yeah. <laughs> and it's us through all throughout the day. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that was the first. Hopefully, you liked it. That was the first Q and A. Um, these are going to be uploaded on Patreon exclusively for right now. Even a dollar gets you access to all these videos. If you like what you see, follow along, subscribe, smash that button. And if you like what you see, we got some new swag out, some new clothes, yeah. t-shirts, hats, Online. masks. Here we got a website, scarletoakfarms.org. Check us out. And if there's more questions, let us know. We'll do a Q&A once a month. And we're going to try to have some surprise guests uh, and just some podcast type stuff uh, every other week so we can give you guys some good content, some of the stuff that you guys are looking for. Let us know what you want to see. And... Oops.
see you along the journey. There you go.